Hello, everyone, and welcome to another Bantablet session. I'm David Hull, and yeah, I'm going to be accepting challenges from premium members today. I'm kind of considering myself as a warm up act. There's a, there's a match later in the Bantablet Cup, but uh, yeah, I'll try and get you guys warmed up for that. So, um, as you can see, I think below, uh, my name on Chess24 is Kingsmead, K I N G S M E A D. So, yeah, I'll be accepting, I think, three minute challenges and some five minute challenges. Um, I'll accept the five minutes when, you know, I'm more in the mood to chat, and then three minutes just to kind of get as many games done as possible. But yeah, uh, I see the challenges flowing in. So, let's get started. Start with a three minute game. Wolverine. There's a lot of challenges already, so thank you everyone for tuning in early. For those of you who saw last time, I am on my touchpad again. Um, playing my old boring opening repertoire as usual. Uh, I got told off last week that I was playing G3 in every game and B3 too early, so let's try something a bit different this time. Um, yeah. I'm a bit worried already. I'm not really uh, so well versed in opening theory in the King's Indian from either colour, but we'll see how things go. Um, yeah, G4 looks like an active move. Yeah, I hope you're do all doing well anyway. I mean, this is, yeah, it's very sunny here in South East England. Um, it's a bit frustrating that we can't get out and celebrate Easter properly, but. Hopefully this is celebration enough. Um, C6, so does he want to go queen B6? Maybe. Usually in this line, white has some problems castling the king, but black does have a bit less space. It's harder for him to break out. Um, yeah, I'll be catching up with the chat um, as we go along as well. I did see some very, very nice comments right at the top of the chat uh, over the last few hours. So thank you <laughs> to Devin Patel for uh, and Top Harley and everyone um i do have for those of you who were here last week i do have a better setup as well i have a different screen this time for the chat so i won't be looking at my phone every few minutes uh, okay so bishop d7 this is where things get tricky i always see magnus carson do uh, i mean just crush his opponents in these lines as white but i never really know what to what to expect i'm hoping the black can't play b5 yet um b5 i'll try and take that pawn so to, for those of you in the chat, hello everyone, hello Sleepy Tree, Valter G. <laughs> I don't need to charge my phone this time. It did die live on uh, live on air the other day, my phone battery, but um, I wouldn't be needing it today. Yeah, Rook C8, I really don't. I mean, it's not that I don't like White's position, but it's just a bit loose. Okay, let's play H4 to pretend I'm going to attack. C5. So G5. Um, do I play G5? Do I play H5? It's always a bit of a dilemma here. I'll play G5 just to lessen the pressure on my centre. Um, once his knight leaves, then he won't get B5 so uh, so easily. Top of Harley. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> thanks. I'm glad to be back. Um, I'm glad. Oh, yeah. I'll talk about it a bit later, but thank you for buying my video course as well. Um, Bayloof. My voice is hypnotic. Well, I try and stay awake <laughs> for the next hour or two. Um, if you can. Um, by h7, that's strange. Does he just want to give up a pawn? I mean, I could play rook g1 if I, I mean, my intention was to play h takes g5, h takes g5, knight h7, then rook g1, but now he's given me an extra option. Okay, can't resist. I'm greedy. Let's play h5. Now he's played g5, it's less, well, I was about to say it's less clear that he wants to play f5, but he probably does. Um, anyway, I want to play bishop g4 and exchange the light square bishops, but knight d3 check was a bit annoying, so I'll play bishop takes c5 first. And I <laughs> did a bit of a dangerous pre move with bishop g4. If I can leave black with his dark square bishop on h8, then I think I'll be doing very well. But long way to go before the end game. Um, so in the chat, hi Dutch defender, hi Phil not. Ah, oh, <laughs> everyone's being so nice again. I'm not used to this. I'm used to kind of just talking to myself during this isolation uh, period. Okay, so queen c8. That's a good move. Um, okay, then. Do I take? Yeah, let's change bishops and go a4 just to stop him playing b5, b4. I want to kill all black counterplay if I can. 
Um, if he has to play a five, then let him. Um, do I take it? I don't actually want more. Not, still not sure where my king's going, but his king is not entirely safe either. Um, um, if he takes an e4, then... Yeah, maybe I shouldn't have allowed this one. Maybe I should have got my knight to e4 as quickly as possible. But, okay, let's play queen e2. I'm playing very slowly in this first game. I'm hoping I'll speed up. <clears throat> Which way do I go with my king? Uh, okay, let's put the knight on it. Active looking square, c4. So if he goes rook fc8, I'll go knight b6. Because I'm a trickster. If not, I might play b3, maybe put my other knight on b5. I mean, I do dominate most of the light squares on the board right now. Um, queen c7, knight b5, attacking his queen. Maybe a mistake there from my opponent. I'll try and be greedy and take on d6 next. Uh, so hello everyone in the chat. Yeah, you are a friendly bunch. Um, okay, which knight? Okay, when in doubt, let's, let's grab a pawn. I'm up on the clock as well, just about. Oh, that's a scary looking move. I should have played rook a3 or something. Ah, uh, let's run away. Ah. Uh. Oh, God. I'm hoping I'm still alive here. I'm trying to trick him because he can't defend his rook anymore. He goes queen a2, I go knight c3. So I was a bit lucky. Um, lucky there. Oof. <laughs> I'm warming up, guys. I'm warming up. But well well played, Wolverine. That was a great game. Um, he nearly got me at the end there. With Queen h3 scared me. It's a scary move to face in blitz. But okay, let's get the challenges uh, up again. Um, oh, wow, this, they're flooding in right now. Um, okay, I'm going to play... Someone that I think I know his identity, but uh, I don't think we've played before. Um, tactic monster. I won't reveal your secret identity online, but um, I think he's a junior from the, the region that I live in England. Very promising player. Uh, I think 12 years old, maybe? Ah, oh, this line. What should I play here? Okay, let's play my favorite opening. If he takes my knight on f6, I'll take the e-pawn, and that pawn structure for black is super dodgy, but it means I can get my pieces out quite safely, and my king will always be safe uh, on that king side. I call it the bug house structure. If he played knight takes f6, he takes f6, because that's like ideal for bug house, um, just to get your king super safe. Um, we need to sort all the GMs play. Um, yeah, let's play queen a5. There's lots of moves there for black. There's bishop e6, there's queen d5, there's knight d7, there's all the moves. Oh wow. A theoretical battle. Um, thank you for those of you. Oh, Phil Knotts reminded me that my application for the CCC has been rejected. Yeah, still gutted about that. I'll try and play uh, some more chicken chess today during the session just to remind Jan Gustafsson and all the other members that uh, <laughs> they do have a, an aspiring player here. Um, Ray Bellotta, did I see Carson Sugirov? Yeah, I mean, it was incredible. Um, for those of you who haven't seen it, go and check it out. Um, it'll probably be on the Chess24 page or the Chess24 YouTube page, um, watching Carson's commentary on his 9-0 victory against one of the world's top players. I think Sugirov is world number 62. I did a bit of research and um, yeah, I mean, to be anyone in the top 100, 9-0 is just it's out of this world. And especially his penultimate game in this um, Italian, uh, not Italian, in the Spanish, where Carlson ended up, I mean, it's checkmate in like 24, 25 moves. It's Queen G3. Go check it out. It's, it's scary to be able to play Blitz games that accurately and that quickly. Sikiaro. Never seen a banter Blitz with David. Oh, now you have. Now you have. I think this, this is only my second one. I, I think I did one years ago in 2016 uh, alongside Fiona. But yeah, that's a different life. Uh, 95. I nearly went knight f6 there, but he, was, he can play knight takes c6. And a potential fork on my rook and my king. So do I take his knight? I don't really want to. Okay, let's play. 
I mean, this is very, very equal. I mean, this is my application for the CCC, the Chicken Chess Club. I mean, it's it's very equal this position. I'm just hoping that there's enough pieces on the board and yeah, to create some kind of imbalance a bit later. Simon Madland, great commentary, David. You're going to have to start being mean to me, otherwise my ego is going to go like, whoo. Um, oh, that's a good move. Knight c4. So he's threatening knight d6 check, possibly, to get the two bishops, but also knight a5 might be an idea. Wow. Okay, let's give him knight b6. I don't really want to allow knight d6. Uh, I mean, if I give him the bishop pair, then he's playing without much risk. If he goes knight a5 now, I've got options. I can just go rook d7. I don't think there's too much trouble. And here, I was hoping that if he plays bishop c7, uh, attacking my b6 pawn and my rook on d8, I was hoping I could just play rook a8. But um, maybe he takes on b6 and just eliminates another pawn from the board, and it's going to be hard for me to win this one. Maybe I'll try and flag him. I'm, I, I, I'm not that bad. <laughs> um, please don't summon Mr. Dodgy, Bailiff. Uh, <laughs> yeah, Mr. Dodgy. He's one of the most fun people to uh, to follow on Twitter. Um, King B1. So now, I'm not sure about that move because now I play B5 and I quite like my pawn structure. Uh, I've got a lot of control over the, over the light squares now. Um, I'll play a move that Hopefully, just annoys him slightly now. Should be four. If he plays c3, then at least his king on b1 feels a bit uncomfortable due to my bishop on f5. Although, actually, that's not a big deal. Maybe that's just over provocation. Um, Welverine, you were reading a Sam Shanklin book an hour ago. Yeah, um, that definitely helped you. I mean, you had me there. Uh, you had me really scared. Okay, now I'll go back. I guess he'll go bishop b4, yeah, to break the pin. I don't really want to exchange bishops. <sighs> okay, don't do this at home, kids. Don't put your bishops, uh, bishops on h3 ever. Um, Ramuz, apparently my opening is very similar to Christoph. I guess you mean Christoph Selecki? Is that chess explained? Yeah, I'm not, not an expert there, but um, yeah, I'm sure he, I mean, his openings are great. Um, he's written some great books as well, so. Um, yeah, castle. Quite a bit of time up on the clock, luckily, <laughs> despite me talking nonsense for the last minute or two. Um, CK Russ, you never feel comfortable playing against these sort of pawn structures as white. Yeah, I mean, that's my experience too, actually. That's why, um, for those of you looking at the board now, the C6 and E6 pawns are, they kind of create a barrier and it's, it's surprisingly hard for white to break through them. Um, I remember I had a lot of games as white when I was young against players like Keith Arkell, the English Grandmaster, and he, I mean, he's, yeah, I mean, he's like the, the maestro at these pawn structures. He seems to win every time as black. He'll be slightly worse. He'll, his opponents will have the bishop pair, better pawn structure, more space, but somehow um, he digs deep and in, uh, in the end game, he, he works extremely well with these pawn structures. So, um, yeah, he's my inspiration. Um, yeah, it should be fire. That bishop going okay. Let's play g5. It's a bit of an odd move and it looks a bit weakening, but I'm hoping that without queens on the board, it's not such a big deal. F4, so he's not threatening anything. So let's play rook a c8. I'm not going to explain my plan yet, um, just in case he's watching. But uh, actually, yeah, let's explain my plan. Um, I'm playing rook c8 just to stop his bishop from using the c7 square. So now his bishop, yeah, it's lacking squares slightly. I might think about f6 at some point in future. Um, okay, so his bishop. I mean, if I get f6 in, his bishop's still trapped. So. Um, and I don't think he can get, really get away with g4. I just take that pawn. Um, and his bishop, okay, it has the g3 square to retreat to, but I'll just be a pawn up. If queen's off the board, I mean, my king's super safe on g8. Okay, okay. as expected. White well, has to give up a pawn. Um, do I kick him back? Do I play f6? Yeah, that bishop's too strong on e5. So. Um, now he retreats. Now I will use my king to support my weak e6 pawn. Uh, yeah, I'm kind of channeling my inner Keith Arkel. He says his favourite move to play in any position is g5, so uh, it's not just for the pawn structure. But I'm uh, following in his footsteps. Yeah, I'm, it's still a bit tricky because white's very active. He's got his pieces on great squares. So I'm going to play bishop h3 again. 
I mean, I took that pawn on g4. Now I'm going back just to stop him playing h2 to h4. Oh, I'm behind in the chat again now. Sionane, um, apparently I'm one of the most pleasant players to watch. Ah, oh, he dies, he dies. I hope you all start beating me and crushing my soul soon. Uh, just, to, uh, just to balance things out. Um, yeah. Ramuz, come on England. Indeed. Um, e5, so he's trying to do something on the f-file with this pin against my king. But if I just move my king, what's happening there? So now I'm threatening to take his bishop, he has to go back. Now I will preemptively defend my e-pawn. Still very hard actually. I mean, he's attacking my e-pawn. Now I'm a bit tied up and I'm walking into some pins, but yeah, White well, still doesn't have any threats though. So how do I slowly untangle? Okay, I'm gonna play bishop f5 check. If he moves his king, I don't like the pressure on e6. So I'm going to play rook h3, trying to exchange off. Ah, he's playing super well, my opponent, right now. Um, I am aware, though, that I might be able to flag him. <laughs> uh, oh, I'm the worst. Um, yeah, how do I improve my position there? That's, that's a tricky one. Do I play b6 and eventually c5 here, maybe? And now he's threatening to take my bishop. Very subtle. But if I go king f5, maybe he can still take my bishop. King takes f5, bishop c2, check. Oh, that's a draw. Well, king g6, rook takes f5, king takes f5, bishop c2, check. King g4, bishop t1, check, and perpetual. So, oh, maybe I just blundered. Rook takes f5. Um, I mean, I don't want to win this one on time. It feels a bit mean. But, okay, let's play bishop g4 and attack him first. Now I'm thinking of that. Yeah, uh, sorry, no, well played, Tactic Monster. You played really well there. I mean, I'm not sure whether I'm even better at the end. I mean, you're so active. But okay, let's play a three minute game this time. So, oh, there's, there's so many challenges. Thank you, everyone. I'm going to try and play players that I didn't play last week in the Phantom Blitz. Um, okay, this one I clicked around in there. And Seg de Nis. Oh, yeah, I don't know how to pronounce that name. Yeah, I also got told off after last week's show that I didn't play uh, E4 at all. I was just sticking to the boring. Uh, Boring openings. So, okay, this time I'll play 1e4, bishop d3. Uh, it's a bit of a rare move, but yeah, I'm not sure about knight f6. Now I can develop my pieces perfectly. It's like a French advance, but black's had to waste time with his knight. Uh, okay. I don't really know how to improve white's position here. Bishop b7. I guess he castles. Um, you can play queen b6. Oh, a6. Uh, where does my knight want to go? My b1 knight. No, b1 to d2 looks okay, but that pawn sacrifice. Yeah, I expected b5. Uh, it's a bit of an odd way to develop for black, but uh, maybe he wants to play b4 and undermine my queen side. Um, Sunday Duck. David, I would like to know if you meanwhile could forget this unlucky loss against Wang Hao in the Isle of Man tournament. Yeah, it didn't really come up last time, but I did indeed lose to Wang Hao in the final round of Isle of Man. Um, it was the kind of move, yeah, I mean, it was the kind of game that I don't traditionally do well in, where you have to win at all costs in the final round. And when the stakes are really high, like if I'd won that one, it turns out I would have qualified for the candidate tournament. Um, yeah, and that's kind of a lifelong dream. And I didn't expect to be there. I think before, before the final round against Wang Hao, I'd won three games in a row. I'd beaten... Kazim Janov as black, I'd beaten, okay, Blue Baum as white, and I'd beaten Grishuk with white. And I mean, I'd kind of given up on my tournament halfway through, and then suddenly I was just catapulted into this kind of stratospheric uh, high pressure situation. And uh, yeah, I just couldn't react really. I mean, I, I knew during the game that Wang Hao was playing for a draw. I mean, it was pretty obvious from his body language and, okay, from the moves he was playing. But um, yeah, I just, it was just wasn't something I expected. I thought he'd go for a win at all costs, and when he started trying to make a draw, um, yeah, I mean, I sat there for like 45 minutes at one point, not even calculating variations, just depressed because I, my chances were disappearing. So, um, okay, now Blacks, let me take a pawn. But yeah, that, that Isle of Man game, I've been on tilt uh, a bit ever since. Um, yeah, I haven't been able to let it go. I mean, I, I think after that tournament, I was 2700 something, but 
Yeah, it's been downhill ever since. Okay. So let's get serious. Let's play knight h5. His king side looks a bit undefended. I'm going to pawn up temporarily, but I don't really want to, uh, to play too slowly and let him get organized. So now I'll give a check. He can go knight g8. Tap my f6 pawn, which maybe I've under underestimated. Although I have some really interesting sacrifices there, like she takes g6. Okay, instead he goes knight c6, but now maybe I can just defend my extra pawn. I mean, he can't castle kingside now because my pawn on f6 is too strong, and castling queenside has its dangers as well. Um, okay, let's get back to the chat. Phil Dots, I'm clearly. Yeah, I mean, Magnus isn't in the business of charity. I mean, nor am I, if you can tell by the way I'm flagging people. Um, after a5, I really want to play bishop takes g6. F takes g6, rook takes g6, check. Not sure it quite works. Okay, when in doubt, I've only got a minute as well. I've been talking too much this game, so b takes a5. I'm greedy, so I'm going to keep my extra pawn. Um, A5. Yeah, so he, he couldn't take on b2 because of rook b1. Now, do I play knight e5? Do I play bishop takes g6 again? Um, okay, I'm going to pretend I'm attacking now. Queen f4. If he plays queen takes b2, at the very least, I can play bishop takes g6 now with some huge attack. Um, he still can't castle kingside. Maybe he can play g5, but. Yeah, I mean, options for luck. Options. Um, let's catch up with the chat. Um, Top of Harley, am I playing some, <laughs> planning some new videos or courses in the future? Um, I'm open to them. Um, I mean, I've got enough material already for a few different potential courses, but yeah, it's just getting my act together and getting organized and finding some poor soul who's willing to um, watch me talk about my boring opening, opening repertoire for a while. Okay. Yeah, g5 is a good move. I should have played h4 maybe to stop him ever playing g5 because now h6 is uh, never attacked. Uh, Phil Knott, who would be my chess, favorite chess 24 player to stream with? Oof. You mean apart from Lawrence Trent? Oh. <laughs> um, that's not hard. Yeah, Bishop, Rook b5 does walk into this pin. Um, that's a hard question who my favorite streamer is. Oof. I mean, Knight 57 looks really strong, but. Okay, when in doubt, just keep things simple. I'll try and open the queen side up now. It, his king's just stuck, been stuck in the middle of the whole game. You still can't, can't really castle king side, so. Yeah, and everything falls apart for black. Um, okay. Pin and win, pin and win. Uh, anything wins here. So yeah, well played, and so this, um, maybe, yeah, not quite the best French defense I've ever seen in my life, but. No, you played very well after that. So, okay. Oh. Okay, so many challenges. I'm just going to have to go a bit at random. Um, Arquidamo, I don't think we played last time. So, um, yeah, favorite streamers. Sorry, I ignored the question last time. Um, I don't know. I mean, Peter Svidl is just a class act in general. Um, Jan, I mean, with younger stuff, and I feel like I can't keep up with this humor. He's just too witty for me. Uh, I feel I have to be like bringing my A game just to compete. A3. I feel like I should know the theory here, but um, I don't really want to play C4. It just changes the nature of the game, blocks things up a bit too much. Um, okay, let's play ninety seven. That is a non-committal move. And I'll play A5. I don't really want to put a knight on C6 too early because now he would play B5 with tempo, so going to try and break up his queen side. Um, I just realized I'm playing the French defense here. I think I've been corrupted by my previous opponent. B5 is a good move. So if I play bishop takes B5 now, he'll play queen B3 and pin my bishop against the queen. So I'll play A4. Maybe, uh, maybe I'm just playing too loose here. Maybe I'm tilting already. Queen A5, bishop D2, and my queen's a bit uncomfortable. So. Oh dear, my queen's on a bad square. The French, yeah. Don't try it at home, kids. Okay. I'll put my knight on b6, but this is so ugly. Oof. I don't know why anyone plays the French defense. <laughs> no offense to anyone out there. Um, 
on Eigelfeld. Peter Svidler is brilliant in Banter Blitz. Yeah, I mean, he's just brilliant at any, anything he tries. Um, no, I mean, I've been lucky. I've, I've worked with Peter in the past as well on some chess, and he's just, I mean, his knowledge is just incredible on every topic. And Yeah. Um, as an Englishman as well, I appreciate his love of cricket. Um, Ramuz, yeah, it's a bit harsh on my previous opponent. I thought he played really well. Um, Mar Marty SFX, David never gets to, to time trouble in Blitz. Uh, I've probably played quicker in Blitz than I do in um, regular chess. Oh, God, this is getting complicated now. I mean, my piece is so bad. I might be about to face my first defeat. Oh, well. D4. Yeah. Yeah. Oh dear. Oh dear. Let's play g6 and hope he can't sacrifice on g6. It's gone very wrong. My queen's offside. Okay, let's play h5, kicking away. Oh, that's a bad move, actually. I'll maybe I'll play g5 now and pretend that. Nah, g5 is too much. How do I get my piece in the game? Queen a5. I'm hoping to get him to, to commit to bishop b2, but maybe his bishop's not too bad there. Bishop b2, I don't really want to play bishop takes a3. Uh, I don't know, I can't give up my uh, my dots for the bishop, it just holds everything together now. Um, this knight on b8 is driving me crazy. Crazy. Okay, let's put my king on g7. Yeah, I'm scared he's going to attack me. Um, let's go in. In like Flynn. My queen's just too bad on a5. I mean, he can sacrifice at some point with f5, but I'm not sure. I mean, it's a huge gamble. At least now I get my queen on some normal-ish squares. Uh, queen f8. Attack a3. Uh, I mean, I've just realised I let him into c7 with his rook, but I don't think he's attacking anything from c7. Yeah. I mean, he's in a... It's an aggressive mood, my opponent. Okay, let's at least grab something for my suffering. Oh, I just blundered. Oh, maybe I blundered. Wait, now I can take his bishop. I mean, if I survive this, it's going to be a miracle. I'm just worried that I'll run into some queen. My queen will get attacked somehow, but let's see it yet. Um, Oh, this is so. Why are people playing well? Um, King h7 or number of c7, knight e7. Yeah, King g8 looks a bit wrong somehow. Oh, that's a bad move. Oh, god, that's a bad move. Oh, that's a bad move. <laughs> Sorry, guys, I'll play better in the next game. Um, I was worried about knight f3 there, <laughs> but knight pd7 maybe actually is quite good. As soon as I say it, he plays it. Yeah. I think I'm attacking his queen, otherwise I'm just busted. But I am busted anyway. I mean, his queen's attacked. Oh, this has been the worst game I think I've ever played. But queen f3. But now he's not attacking anything, so... I mean, apart from f7, so now I can defend. He should have played queen e7 there, and it was super scary for me. Now he wants to... I mean... He wants to jump in with his knight, but I can take with the queen luckily. Okay, and now I'm two pieces up and should be win. I mean, my opponent's just yeah, let me off the hook there. Um, played a great game. Let's push my opponent. Yeah, I mean, no, well played to my opponent. I mean, so underrated there. Whew. Counting my lucky stars. Um, hey, who's been waiting for a while? <laughs> just because I like your username, uh, I won't say it out loud just in case I'm accused of bantering my opponents a bit too much. Um, okay, so I get white again this time. E4 was too exciting for me last time, so D4. Um, okay, I'm catching up with the chat. Yes, John Partholomew is an awesome streamer. Um, team Scandi. Um, Jan does know openings very well. Um, Queen B6, that's annoying. 
because there's some theory here. Can I play knight a3? I know knight c3 is the main move, but I'm going to play now I'll back with knight c4 and hope that, yeah, I hope that this has helped me, although my knight isn't really secure on c4. Um, okay, h3, that's a typical London system move. Put the bishop back on h2, keep it nice and safe, tucked away. CK Russ, yes, Grishuk's a great blitz player. Um, Hornpusher, I think you know more about the French defence than I do, uh, as you can tell by my dodgy game in the last round. Uh, well, my dodgy last game. Uh, do I play a4 here? Yeah, let's play a4. When in doubt, play a4. Um, it's about pawn sacrifice. I can't resist. Yes, the would be proud of me here, grabbing a free pawn. I haven't castled yet though, which is slightly worrying. Um, yeah, some talk about cricket. Pepe Juan, I can't pronounce it. Pepe is a great uh, commentator in Spanish. Don't really understand what he's saying, but you don't need to, I think, with Pepe. Um, just castle now, finally. I guess we'll go rook b8. My b2 pawn is a bit tender bit of a target, but maybe I can just defend my bishop with c4 or queen e2. And don't really see what the fuss is about. I'm still uh, up. Okay, but now queen b6, I can play queen a4 and I gain the tempo against this knight. My knight might jump back to c4 as well. My rook might come to a1. Oh, oh wow, I'm so behind in the chat. Uh, <laughs> three minutes behind. Okay, let's catch up. No, well done, Aquidamo. Aquidamo, my previous opponent. Um, I think actually uh, this is my second banter blitz, and he's uh, he's the one who's got me in the most trouble so far. Uh, got me the most worried, at least. Okay, queen b7. I'll play rook a1 because it looks active. And now I'll try and trade queens because I'm a chicken. I've done the hard work. I've won a pawn. Why complicate things now? Um, his queen's not running away, so I think I can just take this pawn back. Now my b-pawn is passed. Yeah, you're right, Von Eigelfeld. This is very Benko-like for black. Although, I'm not sure his bishop on g7 is as active as it is in the Benko gambit. 95. Okay, he's attacking both my bishops, so let's trade queens and drop back. Uh, I didn't really want to get g3 because of knight h5, but he plays it anyway. Um, rook a7, just rook b8, doesn't really achieve much. Hmm. does have this nice f4 square, which is going to be a bit of an issue to deal with. How do I keep things nice and everything nice and protected? Um, I don't know. King f1, why not? So that when he plays knight f4, there's never any checks. I'll drop my bishop back at some point to c4 or e2 or somewhere. Um, okay, let's put it on c4 and ask him what he wants to do with his knights. If he plays knight df4, I'll play g4 maybe. Okay, now he's retreated at least. Um, now his other knight isn't coming to f4, which is a bonus. Yeah, some Spanish chat in the... <laughs> uh, I don't really speak Spanish. Unfortunately, one day it's been like top of my list, my to do list for a few years now. But um, yeah, bishop f6. I don't really know what he wants to do with that. Does he want to play knight g7? I mean, if, you, if he wants to play knight g7 anyway, there's no point in me playing uh, playing g4. So um, I really want to play knight e4, but how do I achieve it? Okay, let's drop back. Oh, I want to play knight e4 next move. Yeah, now I get the bishop pair. Yes. To change things. Yeah, that's the right pawn pusher. There's a tip in my video course that you should keep everything protected. Most of my stuff's protected now, apart from bishop on c2 and the rook on a1. But okay, let's protect more stuff. Yeah, my bishop on h2 is not great though. Let's try and reroute my knight. It wasn't doing too much on f3. So. Um, okay, let's drop back. I'm, uh, I'm scared I'm going to get flagged in this game now. 
H4, so I can play G3 later. At some point I start pushing my B pawn. Actually, I should play F3. Right there. Yeah. B3 is coming. I'll just take G4. I mean, I'm, yeah, I mean, he's trying to play scary moves, but I'm going to flag him with my touchpad. D5 next. Uh, he pre moved, and his other knight's hanging now. Yeah, well played, Stone Cold. <laughs> More, um, no, what, you played really well there. Um, I think just after letting me grab that pawn at the beginning, never quite got back in the game, but um, did scare me. Okay, pawn holder GM. Wow. I keep getting, okay, let's, let's do a big one. Um, I got confused between you and Pawn Pusher in the chat. Okay, let's see if I can see who this is. Serbia, GM from Serbia. Okay, flattered that GMs are watching my stream. To be honest, let's get back to my boring repertoire just because I can. Uh, at least here you can pre-move the first few moves. Uh, okay, now you can play knight c6. You can play d5. You option d6. This is supposed to be slightly better for white just because of a bit of extra space, but it's in reality it's hard to do much with that space. Uh, Bishop g4 though looks odd. Now I grab a pawn. Now I go back. Pawn up. Just like the last game. Um, I'm greedy. Okay. E5 is a bit weakening though. Um, that looks like the kind of tilt move that um, I wouldn't recommend. So, okay, now I have options. Let's gang up on the d5 square. I might put a knight into d5 at some point, but no rush. I'll play bishop a3 first. e4, so yeah, he wants to do something on this diagonal to me, but I mean, I could just play rook, e, uh, rook c1 if I want, but okay, let's just do this. I'm in the mood to sacrifice something. Uh, takes a1, I would have played queen takes a1. Oh, that's a very good move, and I missed that one. Queen to a5, I guess I have to play knight c2, but that's not fair deal. Okay, because I, if I, I don't have anywhere to move my bishop, if I go back to c1, he takes my rook on a1. Yeah, okay, now I take the queen and I think I'm happy. I mean, I'm pretty close to checkmating him, but not quite. Um, d5 is coming there, so I've got to be a bit careful. Queen e5 may be coming as well. I'll play rook d1. I've scared my piece a bit loose. Queen d4 is also possible, but queen e5. Oh, I was so unnecessary to sacrifice there. I was just dominating without, without needing to do that. Getting nervous now. Um, bishop b4. Let's play rook d1. d1, bishop c4. Queen d4. Okay, I mean, I don't know why I spent like 43 seconds on one move there. I mean, I'm not really... Uh, Definitely didn't need to do that. Okay, Bishop G4. I mean, I'm, uh, he's kind of playing for tricks, which <laughs> I mean, I do myself, so I shouldn't criticize. But um, okay, Bishop F5. I mean, yeah, let's drop back. I mean, my Bishop was loose on A A3 anyway. He has to play Queen E5 here. Um, I'll take this Bishop. At least I ruined his pawns. And what do I do now? Knight e3? Is that a move? No. Yeah, I'll protect my bishop so he has to take on d4, I think. Unless, you know, I, was gonna say, I was about to say knight c6, it may be possible, but I thought, I thought I could checkmate him now. I don't know. Or I'll get back to the chat soon. I mean, I want to win this game and I'm playing super slowly. So. Let's defend my e pawn first. I mean, it feels like I'm doing very, very well, but yeah, it's one thing to say that, one thing to prove it. Um, wow, this guy, I mean, he's taking huge liberties, but maybe he's just playing great moves. Okay. I need to just speed up, basically, no matter what I do, just, just play quickly. I mean, uh, I mean, positionally here, I must be just crushing, but yeah, I mean, no time. So. Um, 
I'm really sure what that last bit was, but oh well. So root d3, bishop c3. Um, I needed to defend d3 before I play that one. I mean, it's clever, but I don't need to take that rook. Thank you. Oh, that's a mis mistake. Oh. It's going too slowly. I mean, now I'm, I'm, I'm in big trouble, but... Uh, oh, mouth slip. <clears throat> G2 and I was doing well, but oh well. Looks like my first defeat, everyone. Uh, not very happy. I mean, I just had him uh, pretty slowly, basically. I had him there, but oh well. I'll go back to the chat in a minute. Um, I mean, he just takes f3, takes e3, and I think my king's just too weak here. Or oh, can do this. <clears throat> yeah, and as long as he goes to the right square. Yeah, not a sign. Two queens is too much. Well done to my opponent there. Okay, so, yeah, I'd love to know who, who he is, but um, yeah, I just play too slowly. I need to get used to multitasking, chatting and talking. Um, okay, another three minute game. Playing all the title players now. Um, now I'm playing a WFM, Dorina Demeter. Dem oh, I've got white again. I guess C4 this time. Um, oh, I'm so behind in the chat there. Um, knight C3. Okay, um, okay, D4, could transpose, I'll just play a bit. Bit of a sideline here, bit of a flank opening. This one, I mean, players like Jan Nepomnishi, uh, he had a great game against back row uh, in the final round of the 2018 Olympiad, that's all I remember. And then I tried to copy it and it never quite worked out the same way. Um, Pawn holder, apparently he plays every single banter blitz. Okay, uh, I wish I'd known that, I wish I'd known that. Um, catastrophe, courage, Kingsmead. Yeah, catastrophe, my last game. I mean, if I hadn't played queen b6, I mean, he can barely make a move. I should just build up slowly. I, I betrayed one of my own recommendations in my video course. I left my rook on d3 undefended. And that's what cost me. If I just put it on any other square, be pretty much. Um, okay, I should have played faster as well. So um, this one, yeah, this one's been a bit slow to start. Not much action so far. C5. Does my opponent want to play d4? Ever? Probably not. Do I want to play d4? This is the kind of position Hikaru Nakamura would play d4. Okay, I'll pretend I'm Hikaru. Um, why did I not play in the Banter Blitz Cup? Um, yeah, I... Uh, just not very organised. Uh, I think I got a message about it and then I just it completely slipped my mind and one week later it, everything was sorted and it was all ready to go and I'd, I think I'd missed the boat. I was a bit too late, so. Um, okay. Yeah, the worry is that this might become very equal if I don't do anything too sharp soon, so. Okay. I don't know what else I can do really. I mean, Bishop F3 is met by knight e5, so I'll just take this pawn. Do I get Bishop F3 now? And then knight e5 again. Take this. It looks very symmetrical. I'm just hoping to outplay my opponent a bit later, although pff, easier said than done. Uh, F3 now? No. I don't know. I really want to get hold of the c6 square for white. That's normally the key square in these positions. So if I can exchange bishop takes f3, queen takes f3, at least I have some access to the c6 square maybe. Um, right, let's catch up. But this one, I thought, queen b7, I have the option to play knight f5 now. Uh, a bit of a tactic. I've really slowed down in the last few minutes. Uh, hello, Cobra. Hello, everyone who's just joining. Phil not. David would be Alareza in the Banter Blitz. I mean, as you saw in the last game, I mean, okay, my moves on the board can be okay, but I'm just too slow. I'm too old these days. I played Alareza at Bullet a few times and it's like torture. Um, yeah, okay, I guess I'll take on d5 and 
at least I secured a slightly better pawn structure. It's not much for white, but um, my opponent now she'll have a, an isolated queen's pawn. Oh. Queen takes f6, queen d1. I think I can win a pawn there. Yeah, I mean, I could play queen takes d5 and I'm just slightly better, but not much. So let's try and be a bit more ambitious. So if she takes back on f6, I have 97 check with a fork. So she takes on d1. And now I was hoping to go 97 check, intermediate move, take that pawn, and I'll take on d1. And I'm a pawn up. So I do have some issues with my knight potentially. I want to get it to c6, but um, should I do it now? C6 isn't running anywhere, so she can't cover the C6 square next move. So my knight's not trapped. Let's play F3, King F2. Do what all, do what all good endgame players do. Bring their king towards the center. Maybe just King F1s quicker. Which way? Ah. Yeah, and I have to retreat the whole way, which yeah, I'm being quite inaccurate around here. Um, let's play e4, maybe. Deter f5, and now I'll speed up. I'm going to try and put my knight on f5, and there's some mating nets potentially against the black king. Uh, well, is that a mistake? E4. Oh, no, it's not a mistake. David. Yeah, she can protect d6 um, with her knight. Now the knight's not so great, so yeah, I'll pretend I'm making progress on this side of the board. Her knight's tied down to d6 because that would be checkmate, that square, uh, on that square, so. Okay, now I'll come around. Oh, king pawn ending. Move that four. Uh, move that one. Oh no. Yes, oh. <laughs> the checkmate. Yes, now well played, uh, Darina. No, great game. Um, I think it's just that tactic where I won a pawn and uh, got tense after that. It got very tense. Uh, luckily, I, I was able to speed up just at the right time. Um, okay, so I'm going to play a future GM. I've played a GM, I've played a WFM. Let's play a future GM here. Uh, future GM123. I've got white again. Whoa. Okay, last time I won a game with B4. Um, let's try it again. So on last week's Banter Blitz. Um, Dutch Defender, if there was a prize for most words spoken during a Banter Blitz, it would surely be Pepe. I agree. Okay. Um, so this one has always confused me. Like, Black gives up a central pawn for a wing pawn, but. Yeah, I guess black it does get a lot of development. It's regarded as quite a good line for black. So, um, I did see someone play bishop takes f6 once in that position and then just c3, put the pawn on d4 and just kind of put all the pawns on dark squares. But, um, okay, let's see the chat. No, thank you, Dorina, for the game. You played really, really well. Um, bishop b5. Yeah, I mean, I'm just trying to get developed and I'm hoping that my extra central pawn will be important in the middle game or towards the end game. Um, could take on c6, I'm not sure there's a rush. Um, do I play h3, do I castle? Okay, let's play h3 first. Bishop h5, I guess, and then I'll just, now I'll castle. I do have the option of playing bishop b2 if I need to break the pin along the uh, h5 to d1 diagonal, but we will see, we will see. Um, wow, lots of people in the chat. Um, I feel like I'm not as good keeping up today with the chat as I was the other day. A6, do I play bishop b2 or do I take on c6? Oh. I do love my better pawn structures, but that pin is a bit annoying, so bishop to e2. Maybe I should have put it there a few moves ago. Um, now I'll play d3, now bd2, and get my last few pieces out. Now bd2, rook b1. Um, 
Pedrag Milosevic. Do I know which players, eight players will play in the chess 24 tournament? I guess you mean the Magnus Invitational. Um, I'm not entirely sure, but keep an eye out on the chess 24 homepage. I'm sure they'll, or on the Twitter, on chess 24 Twitter, I'm sure they'll announce that soon. Um, Pedrag, if you do want some top class entertainment with strong players or stronger players than me, then uh, stay tuned a bit later. There's a banter blitz match between Alareza Ferruzia and. Um, and a very strong opponent. I think Narayanan from India. Um, yeah, so Shmei Five. Hmm. So Dabish wants to sit on B6. Where, uh, it's not a great square, but maybe not, it's a, not a bad one either. Okay, let's play Knight B3. I force that bishop to go and then Queen D2. At least all my pieces are kind of in the game now and um, coordinating. 95. Yeah, I mean, I'm not really sure I want to exchange pieces, but I am more cramped than my opponent, so I'll follow conventional wisdom and allow an exchange of one. Uh, one set of minor pieces, Quinty six, good move. I mean, last, oh, actually, yeah. I was about to say last move, maybe I can play knight c 5 knight c 5 f4, and then f5 to trap his bishop, but e3 would have been hanging, so scratch that. Yeah, maybe I played too slowly. I should have played with c4 a bit earlier. Now it's hard. I want to play a5. Um, if his bishop has to leave b6, then maybe the b7 form will be a bit weak for the target. And yeah, apparently the players for the Magnus Invitational will be announced very shortly. So stay tuned for that one. I'll be watching. Uh, I write for a newspaper and I definitely need some, I mean, at this time during the lockdown, I definitely need some games to keep me going to write about. So I can't wait for that tournament. Um, yeah, players are talking about all the double Ds and the DHs and the, all the initials uh, in the chat. Um, so do I take, I can take three different ways. Wow. I'll take with the knight. Now that he's played a5, um, it's less likely he can play c5 to kick my knight away from... Well, okay, then he plays it. Because now at least I get this beautiful square on b5. Maybe it's less beautiful than I thought it was. Um, okay, my bishop on e2 is not doing much. Let's drop it home. Um, for those of you who were here last week, yeah, I mentioned that Peter Lecco said he noticed it was my style to retreat all my pieces. I think my opponent wants to play a cheapo now with bishop takes h3, g takes, and then knight. Uh, back, so I'll stop that. Oh, I should have played bishop c3 at some point. I'm playing so slowly, tentatively. Okay, let's clear the b file. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not on my best form today, but we'll see. I'm going to try and bring my knight round now. There might be some fork on f4. It allows me. Okay. What? He's dropping all his pieces, but I've got no time. Ah, uh, should have enough time to mate here, surely. Yes, I didn't get flagged. I mean, my opponent had a great position there. I think he, uh, maybe he just timed it wrongly. Like he tried to, <laughs> tried to flag me at the cost of dropping all his pieces, but um, luckily I had enough time. So I'm going to try and play some players who've been waiting a long, long time here. Um, it looks like MK161257 has been waiting a long, long time. So let's try and get this game going. Hopefully he's at the board. Yep, he is. So 906. Um, too much choice here. E6, G6, D6, B6, B6. Okay. Um, yeah, double fin chateau. Another one, another one. I'll play E4 next time I get white, just to make it a bit more interesting. Um, so I, I'm playing D5, so I'm playing E4, but yeah. Not the most exciting opening again. Oops. 
yeah, during this lockdown, I'm not so used to sitting in this chair um, <laughs> doing work. Uh, it's so easy to kind of just lounge around. Now I'm kind of getting restless. So sorry if I'm moving about too, too much. Uh, C4. Yeah, I mean, should I play C5? Let's play C5. Let him decide what he wants to do in the center with his, uh, his pawns. I mean, probably if I were him, I'd just keep the tension as long as possible. But, um, okay. Dutch Defender says it's not very wise to put your pin code in your username. I guess that refers to my opponent's uh, uh, username. But he does have six numbers in his name, which, as far as I know, is more than a pin code. Uh, C65. Okay, and that takes, at least his pawn on d4 is pinned now. The bishop on b2 is loose, so I feel not rat -a -ta 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 -ta. I did get a message from Lawrence Trent earlier with some very strange stuff. I think he was inspired by watching Pepe's latest videos. Um, actually, now we mentioned, I also, I got an invitation today to an online tournament and uh, that Lawrence Trent is organizing for has-been players. So, I mean, while it's flattering to be uh, considered a has-been, <laughs> I mean, he's probably not wrong. Um, C1. I mean, it's just a question of this position, when to take on d4. I'm not ready yet, so I'll play e6, queen e7 if I can first. Pawn holder. A few minutes ago he said, thanks for the game, buddy. Didn't play for a couple of days, he's a bit rusty. I mean, if he's rusty and he still beat me, then... Ah, uh, false modesty. Um, maybe bishop a6 now just forces equality immediately, which is not ideal, but... I'll try and live with it. Bishop a6. Maybe my bishop on b7 is potentially quite good. So. Rookie one, that's a strange square for white's rook. Normally wants to be on d1. Um, yeah, people are mentioning that my opening's very restrained. I mean, as you can see, it's because I try and flag people later on. I just try and survive as long as possible. And Go <laughs> um, cool guy. They, apparently I didn't answer his question earlier, so does my mind calculate well during commentating or in silence? Uh, I think it's, uh, I think anyone calculates better when uh, not talking too much. Uh, I mean, I'm still relatively inexperienced at these banter blitzes, and I'm like, I mean, those who know me <laughs> say that I'm the worst multitasker ever. I can barely uh, cook, let alone, uh, like, cook and talk at the same time, let alone play chess and talk. But, um, yeah, I mean, calculation normally is one of my biggest strengths, or so I've been told, but yeah, during the banter blitz, I'm making no promises. Um, my opponent's now allowed knight to f4, which is a bit strange to do. Um, I think I can win a piece here. So if I take everything off, so I'll take the rooks off, and then I'll take his knight on e5, then I'll play knight f4 at the end. Then his bishop on d3 will be hanging. That's the extent of my calculation. Sorry, uh, go cool guy. Just three moves. Um, Red Ribbon 3700. Um, am I working harder than normal on Chester in the quarantine? Um, yes, I think, but um, it's only because there's not much else to do. It's not out of, uh, not because I'm feeling inspired or anything. Um, yeah, so my opponent unfortunately dropped his bishop on d3 and now the rook on c1 falls as well. Um, yeah, thanks for the game, MK, and then your pin number. Uh, thank you. Okay, let's see where we're at at the challenges. Um, okay. uh, who should I play? Oh, so much choice. Okay. Did I play you last time, Putrov? No, I don't think so. Um, okay, now I'll play E4, as promised. One holder, he's, he's beaten me, so now he's off to have a beer and chill out. Ugh. We're rubbing it in now. Got it. Um, okay, so four knights. I said I'll make it interesting. Okay, let's play a3. Apparently that's a legal move. I once won a very nice game actually with this a3 move. I think I was about 12 years old. It's before I knew any theory. So. Um, Top of Harley, if quarantine lasts too long, then you'll get the FM title. I don't doubt it. I think we'll all be GMs by the time quarantine's over. Uh, that's it's e4. I play knight takes e5. Do I play knight takes e4 and then knight takes e5? Let's try this one. 
hoping I'm, I'm not blundering uh, blundering anything along the e-file. I'm closer to castling than he is, luckily. So, yeah. I mean, who knows? Maybe that's a great move. Um, right, so he's attacking my knight and he's attacking my g2 pawn. Let's take here. I mean, this feels like it's some kind of theory, but I don't know it. I mean, I guess he plays queen takes g2, rook f1, and a6 or something. Uh, but it's super sharp, and I'm hoping to outcalculate him here in the mess. He's attacking my rook and the f2 pawn, so. Always blame the mouse, thinks I'm insanely fast with the touchpad. Um, I mean. <laughs> Yeah, I, I'm just used to used to it now. I've been playing on a touchpad. I've been playing online blitz for 20 years or something, uh, like most of my chess career. So just used to it, I think. And I'm always too lazy, lazy to replace the batteries in the mouse in the first place, let alone actually maneuver the mouse. So, um, so if I move my bishop, bishop a4, does he have bishop g4? F3, bishop e7. Oh my gosh. No, bishop a4. Bishop G4 is met by a 95 check, discover check. Oh, I don't know, this is too sharp. I think knight takes D5 might have been a move there as well, but so much calculation to do. I haven't really played safe in this game. Clamar 74. David, when I trained with Kasparov, when you trained with Kasparov some, several years ago, were you able to outcalculate him? Um, so I wouldn't say I trained with Kasparov so much, it was more just a training match. Um, ah. Yeah, that's a bummer. Um, yeah, I guess I have to be a queen too. Um, yeah, it was more of a training match, so I was just kind of a sparring partner for him. But we did analyze a bit and discuss things. And um, I mean, they were just rapid and blitz games, so calculation, it's a bit like this. It's calculations shorter and sharper, and it's a bit more superficial. But um, I mean, I think he probably outcalculated me for the most part, but. There were moments when I, when I saw a bit deeper than him. Uh, very few moments, but there were one or two maybe. Uh, I think he, I mean, <laughs> the guy who beat me today said he was feeling rusty, but I mean, Kasparov, I mean, how, how rusty do you think he was feeling? Just uh, 20, retiring for, what, 15 years and then. Um, so B5, if I just move my bishop. Because if he takes on F1 now, uh, takes everything on F1, then... Okay, which he does. Um, I do have two pieces for the rook, if I'm counting correctly. So I should be doing well here. Um, I take with the d-pawn so it's easier for me to develop. Now I'll take d5. Uh, should I protect the h-pawn? I mean, it's not hanging yet. If he plays bishop takes h2, I'll play knight e7 check and, take, and then take his rook on a8. So he moves that rook. Six. Okay, let's try and attack in the end game. Oh, I could have played bishop h6 there. Too weak, too slow. Hmm. Okay, so he's allowing me to kind of weaken his pawn structure, but maybe it's not such a big deal. My knight kind of wants to be over on the king side now. I mean, it looks very pretty on uh, c6, but. I do like my bishops, so. Just take that bishop and come back. Uh, do I give a check? Do I play rook here first? Attack that h pawn. Okay, now he lets me take it and take the a6 as well. Bishop h6 is threatened. Yeah, bishops, they're beasts. Um, yeah, unfortunately, my opponent, I think he lost his way in the time, uh, not in the time scramble, in the complications there, just off the opening. Maybe black's doing quite well, but it's super sharp. So, um, okay. Then six five seven. Um, yeah, I'll play d four again. Um, David, what was the chess book that made the greatest impression on you? Um, probably Jonathan Rousen's Seven Deadly Sins. Um, seven de Deadly Chess Sins. Um, I remember reading it when I was <laughs> long story. Um, I did this exchange program with a French school when I was really young. Um, I think I was ten years old. 
and I went to Paris. Um, like so, he came to stay with my family for a while. I went to stay with his family, and then um, the idea was to learn the language and the culture and everything. But when I was over there, uh, they yeah, it wasn't the best experience of my life. Let's just say that um, they didn't really want to spend any time with me. They didn't really want to talk <laughs> um, much to me. Uh, my French wasn't so great when I was young. And then, yeah, I brought this book along with me and it was Jonathan Rousen's uh, Seven Deadly Chess Sins. And yeah, I've read it all in within the space of a day or two. And um, some of it that was a bit above, uh, like over my head because, um, I mean, it's quite philosophical. It's quite deep stuff. Um, it takes a lot of self introspection to pick up on those sins, but yeah, I enjoyed it. And I think it made me understand myself more as a player. And, um, yeah, I'd recommend it to anyone out there who wants to think about their chess and the mistakes they make and patterns behind it and that kind of thing. So yeah, Jonathan Rousen, just a great writer in general. And uh, yeah, he's just released a new book as well, The Moves That Matter, which is less about chess itself, but more the stories that are behind, behind the chess. So. Um, yeah, so actually I, I used this, uh, we talked about Kasparov earlier, I used this opening against Kasparov successfully a couple of times um, during our training match. Um, not sure I should reveal all the secrets here, but uh, yeah, so I managed to use this opening with success just because it kind of gets black out of his. I mean, Kasparov, when he was active, was kind of a King's Indian Grunfeld player and not Sicilian Nidor player, and it gets black out of his usual habits. So um, D takes E4. I want to take with the pawn, but there is potentially some discovery on the D file against my queen. Let's try it. I mean, I could take with the queen if I want to be super safe. I guess he wants to play e5 now. Knight c5 doesn't really do much because queen c4, I think. Uh, but I mean, he's opening himself up here. His king's becoming a bit of a target, potentially. Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm not saying I'm doing well, but e5, I want to play knight b3, attack his queen. He has a bit of a dilemma where to put that queen. Um, Pawn Pusher asks, Jonathan Rousen says, never move from the board until the time control. Take a break after that. Um, yeah, I mean, I think that's a good philosophy. I think my, I mean, I don't always follow it, but my role model there would be Michael Adams. Um, I'll, I'll discuss why in a second. Um, so can queen b6? Maybe I'll put the bishop on d6, just because it's hard to get rid of there. And I, I closed the d file now, so he doesn't have any knight. Uh, I don't think he has any knight moves to harass my queen. So now I've got ideas like knight a4, or maybe even a4, a5. It's hard for him to kick my bishop out from d6, surprisingly. Um, but yeah, so Michael Adams, he very rarely leaves the board um, in general, but especially before move 40. Uh, knight b8, I missed that one. I thought maybe knight f8, but knight's on a very bad score on f8. So tempted to play just bishop c5 now and try and take a pawn on a7. e5 looks tempting, but then he has the f5 square for his knight. Bishop g3 looks tempting. Too much choice. Okay, because I've been accused of being boring, I'm not going to play bishop c5 and go after a pawn. I'm going to play bishop h2. The reason I'm going to h2 rather than g3 is because I have the g3 square for my queen now, which I'm going to try and use. So e5, I'll probably just take that pawn. Uh, and then I'll open up the diagonal again for my queen with e6 next move. You can't blockade the e6 square, which is nice. Um, anyway, yeah, so Michael Adams, he's, he used to walk about a lot when he was young, apparently, and uh, he, when he cut it out, his results started um, going up massively. Um, and yeah, he le never leaves the board now unless he's 100% sure he's seen everything there is to see. He thinks a lot in his opponent's time, which means he very rarely gets into time trouble. Um, okay, so I see my opponent's idea. If I play e6, um, play knight a6. Stop me checkmating him. Okay, let's just play the moves. And now I really want to play knight c5 um, to get rid of this a6 knight. If he takes me, then I have checkmate on c7 or b8. Um, yeah, for those of you who don't know this opening, it's called the Veris, well, Veris of Chabava. Um, I would call it the Chabava Prié system because Eric Prié, a French GM, maybe not as famous as Chabava, but he contributed a lot to this theory in the early days. So my opponent trades rooks. 
I think checkmate's inevitable now, or he has to lose a lot of material. Um, yeah, he can play knight f5. Um, he wants to play bishop e5 now, but I think I have a few ways of doing it, including queen h3. And I'm threatening to, oh, I mean, I'm threatening to discover attack against his queen. I should be winning, but yeah. Yeah, I mean, I'm two pawns up and with a winning position, so uh, well played to Adam657. Um, okay, more games. Um, who's been waiting a while? Sothi. Sothi. Okay, um, oh, I've got white again. I'm running out of ideas of what to try as white now. Uh, let's go e4. Played it too many times today. Um, Phil Knott, who is England's next big grandmaster? Hope David. Um, it's hard to say. We have a few strong IMs, um, but they're not that young anymore. And I mean, you compare the situation to England when, I mean, under the age of 20 or 21, I think we've got one or two players over 2,400. Um, you compare that to the US, India, China, it's not as great as it, I mean, yeah. It's not as great as it could be. Um, Osotha, I think you're not at the board, so I'm going to have to abort you. Sorry. Um, so, okay, let's get another game going for someone. I think I played Taj Rob last time. I played Topper last time, I think. Um, and a few people here in the chat before. Eisenstein, I don't think I've played you before. Okay, so, um, yeah, England, I mean, my, my big goal now, I mean, I think I'm past my best as a chess player so I mean my big goal is to help England kind of re-establish itself as a world superpower so at some point I'm going to try and help the next generation a bit more um, I'm already running a team in this 4NCL online um, competition um, the British League which has moved online um, looks like my opponent's not here either um, okay. who's actually at the board I'm going to go for a recent challenge now check 64 um yeah, so I'm running a junior, a couple of junior teams in this uh, league. So I'm gonna, I've been doing some analysis sessions with them and stuff. So hopefully England will have more grandmasters soon. I'm not sure who will be the next. Wait, is this three in a row? Three in a row who aren't actually ready to play. This is strange. Okay, check sixty four. You missed your shot. You missed your chance. Okay, right. Let's go for the most recent challenges because you will definitely be on the board. Be there. Um, Sunday Duck, David, did, I, did you ever play David Mars? Uh, David Mars, uh, Tony Miles. Um, yeah, I mean, actually, uh, I, I mean, of course I met him many times when I was young, but um, the first time I properly spoke to him was uh, on a boat over to France to play in a rapid tournament. Um, he spotted me and my mum and I, I don't know how, but he recognised us and uh, yeah, he came over to talk and he asked me to play for his league team. He said he'd do some free coaching and stuff, which was amazing, just humbling. But unfortunately, just before my debut for his league team, he passed away. So, yeah, I never really got to know him better. But I mean, I've gone through so many of his games and he was just a class act on the board. Um, yeah, so Queen's Gambit declined here from Kuba. Just because I promised to mix things up and play more exciting chess, I'm going to castle Queen's side. Um, I'm not sure which side he'll castle now. I've kind of castled king side, but on the queen side, moved my king and rook over. Um, where should I put my knight on e2 or f3? Yeah, f3 looks good. I kind of put my rook on c1 before knight f3, so now he can't pin, well, he can try and pin me with bishop c4, but it's less effective. Okay. I've seen players play this knight a4 idea before, knight c5 coming. Uh, John T. Adros, apparently I haven't played you before. I will try. Uh, there's lots of challenges. Sorry. Um, sorry, everyone, if I can't get around, everyone, uh, get around you all. But um, Go cool guy. Do I have pets at my home? No. Uh, my mother is from Singapore. And she, yeah, I think in Singapore, it's very rare to have pets. It's like, it's not very common. And, yeah, it's just not in her culture. And she, when uh, when I was younger, um, yeah, she was terrified of, I mean, she'd cross the road if she saw a dog coming. Uh, so yeah, we never had pets when I was young. And now uh, chess player lifestyle, like the professional chess player lifestyle is kind of constant traveling. And unfortunately I'm not married or anything. So I don't have anyone to look after the pets when I'm, uh, when I'm busy at tournaments. So um, yeah, maybe one day I'd love to have a dog, but wow. 
didn't even see that was possible. Um, so he wants to take on f2. I guess I should stop him. So he's created weaknesses on his queen side now, which looks <laughs> a bit ugly for black. But um, yeah, so no pets for me. I think most of my friends consider me as a pet. You know, just needs looking after, needs constant attention. Um, uh, I mean, unless black can play c5 in the near future, then I think black is just positionally busted. Maybe I should have played knight e5 last move, hence my opponent stopping it with f6. Um, yeah, it's worth noting, I can't take on e4 twice now. Bishop takes e4, d takes e4, queen takes e4, because he has bishop takes a2, discover check, and my queen would hang on e4. That being said, I'm very tempted to take once on uh, e4 and then play knight d2. Because that knight's very strong on e4. And knight d2 now, knight takes f2. Okay. Let's try it. Yeah, and now my plan was to put the knight on c5. Maybe I'm letting the advantage slip a bit. Um, rotates, I guess. I'll just try and triple up on the c file, and I mean, his position's a bit loose. Uh, yeah, but that, that being said, I'm not so sure. Oh, yeah, I nearly dropped a rook here in c5. I mean, I have a perpetual. Um, yeah. And it's hard to know how to break through here. I mean, it feels like it should be so good for white, but I can't see a breakthrough. E4 and pretend that I'm doing something on E5 square. But, uh, I'm not convinced. I think my advantage has slipped. For the most part, yeah, Rook D8's a good move, very good move now. Uh, I think so well. Yeah, fortunately, he's covering everything now. Uh, I don't think I'm ever worse, but I'm definitely not bad anymore. Just playing h4 because that's what all the cool, cool kids do. Alpha zero and the lot. So I'm just fixing the king side just so I don't have to worry about that side of the board too much. Um, yeah. I don't really know what I'm doing there. Oh god, what am I doing? Okay. Yeah, I'm gonna get flagged. Maybe now I'm winning. Six wang, six wang. I don't have enough time. Okay, I'll remove that one. Ah. I mean, I'm definitely winning, but do I have enough time? Uh, he resigns. Okay, Cuba, three, three, three. Well done. Um, yeah, I think you definitely had the draw in the bag there, but. Um, yeah, I think you just rushed slightly to exchange off the queens. Uh, yeah, you've got to calculate before heading into those King of Borneo games, everyone. Um, okay, I'm playing someone that I don't think is Magnus Carlsen, but his name's Magnus. Yeah. Hey, I'm getting white in every game at the moment, it seems. Okay, uh, okay I played e4 a few times, d4 a few times. Let's go back to this one. Played b4 once. Um, yeah, I think at this point, uh, we don't have too long left, so I'm going to be playing mostly three-minute games from now on. So if you have challenged me with five minutes earlier, then maybe try and challenge again with three minutes. Um, and I'm going to abort this one because my it looks like Magnus isn't there. Um, okay, Crypto. I think I saw you liked one of my tweets, so I'm going to play you. Um, Still not. Apparently, you need to set me up with someone so that they can look after my future dog. <laughs> Good idea. I feel sorry for that person already. Uh, it looks like this keeps happening. I don't know why. Um, maybe it's because it's Easter. It's Friday. Everyone's heading out for some fun. But yeah, it looks like crypto is not at the board either. So that's three or four. No, four or five now. Um, okay, John T. Adros. I know you're in the chat, and I know we haven't played before. So did I? Try and play before it got aborted. I'm trying to play my F3. Um, Topper Harley, you'll try and solve at least one study every day. Yes, good idea. It's very good. Endgame studies are the best for um, calculation. 
analog man, ethnic Chinese eat them all. Wow. Um, yeah, I'm not really sure I'll talk about my race here, but um, um, chess paggle, what's my job? My job, yeah, I'm very lucky. I, I get to do what I love for a living. I do play chess um, for a living. Um, I do a bit of other things as well. I, yeah, I, I write uh, for a newspaper a couple of times a week, do some teaching, but playing is still my main uh, thing for now. For now. Yeah, definitely passed my best though. As you can tell by the quality of my games today. So, um, Red Ribbon 3700. Yeah, let's hope people are staying home. Definitely. Um, Actually, I don't know. I don't know about other countries, but here they have this. Uh, in England, they have this uh, clap for the NHS for the National Health Service. Um, yesterday, everyone on my street was clapping, and uh, it was nice. Uh, uh, definitely stay inside to save lives, not just your own. Um, uh, lots of lots of questions flooding in now. I'll try and answer more just as we approach these final stages. Um, Bateman forty seven. Your, class, your score against me is 50% in classical chess. Wow. I mean, yeah, uh, a rematch. Um, firstly, I need to know who you are. Richard Bates? No. I don't know who you are, Bateman. 47. Reveal yourself. Shek 64, when was my last appearance in Capella Grand? Uh, long time. I haven't played in France for many, many years, unfortunately. I don't know why. Um, I've had mixed experiences in France. I played for a French league team one time, and then uh, <laughs> uh, as soon as the season finished, I mean, the manager was a bit sneaky. He said he'd pay me at the end of the season, and uh, as soon as the league finished, he disappeared, dropped off the face of the map. I never got paid. Yeah, so I think that was five, six weekends. Uh, I mean, this was 10 years ago, but... Um, Tejar Ravi, how do I pass the time in this period? Um, I play a lot of Blitz online. <laughs> Um, I'm trying to study some chess. It's not always easy to get the motivation. Um, but yeah, I'm trying to keep busy. I'm doing a bit of teaching and things just to keep myself motivated. I'm uh, my favorite football game, uh, my favorite computer game, sorry, Football Manager. I've been playing through a lot of that, but yeah, bits and bobs. I'm still trying to chat to my friends as often as I can, like on Zoom or on, uh, online somehow. Um, it's important to kind of keep your spirits up during this lockdown. I'm hoping that's why all of you are here, just to keep your spirits up by playing some chess. And um, Okay, so that's the trap. How do I study end games? It seems so much stuff to cover. You're right, end games are a lot. Then they can be intimidating. So um, I would keep them in bite-sized chunks. There are end game books out there. I would recommend those by, um, how do I pronounce this? Jesus de la Villa. Um, um, there are some great courses on sites like Chessable. Um, now with, uh, I think, John Bartholomew. Um, but yeah, Karsten Muller did a great book that I read when I was young. And Dovretsky, of course, he's like a, a legend in the endgame sphere. I and mean, it's quite fun as well, the way some of them, uh, the way these guys recommend to study the endgame. Lots of study, uh, lots of kind of positions, problems, lots of calculation. It's not all kind of memorizing, uh, memorizing long um, theoretical rules. Endgames, yeah, they're all about calculation, actually. People underestimate that. Uh, I could swap off rooks with rook b8, but uh, that looks a bit cynical. Actually, maybe I should have done. Yeah, now my opponent's getting some counter play, but should be five. Um, yeah, his knight doesn't have too many great squares, uh, unfortunately. Unfortunately. Phil, not which team or football manager? <laughs> um, how many seasons have I done? I mean, over my lifetime, I think I've probably <laughs> wasted literally hundreds of days. And that's like 24 hour days. I've wasted hundreds of them uh, on Football Manager. Uh, my latest save uh, um, was with Brighton and Hove Athletics because I live quite near Brighton in the UK. Um, and yeah, we finally, after eight years or something, won the Champions League. And, uh, oh, that's a good move. Just tack my rook and my C4. Uh, okay. Okay, I'm playing very slowly here. So knight to c4. I'm hoping I can meet, yeah. I'm hoping I can meet knight to c4 with taking. And if he goes king g6, then rook f8. I don't lose a piece. Or I'll stop knight e4 if I can. Yeah, I've misplayed this a lot though. I should concentrate. <laughs> I'm the worst. 
Uh, let's take another pawn. So I'm four pawns up, but I only have 20 seconds. So, aye, aye, aye. As Niels Grindelius would say, aye, aye, aye. Okay, what's this knight doing? Uh, stop my pawn now. Pawn queens. Rook d1, I guess I'll give a check and then pawn e8 and then queen my pawn. Ah, oh, that's clever. Ah, oh, that's really clever. Okay, king g3. <laughs> If I took his rook, then he could take my rook and he stops my deep one. But yeah, fortunately, he's run out of ideas here. And now I'll just sidestep and I can pre move d8 checkmate. So now, well played, John. Um, great game there. Okay. Um, yeah, I think I'll be playing three minute games um, just, for the just for the last stretch. Uh, for those of you who are just joining. Okay, log 11. Are you there? Please be there. I've had too many people bail on me. It feels like they're teasing me at this point. They're trolling me. Starting the games and then they're not uh, not ready to play. But, um, yeah, okay, I guess I'll abort this one. Some of you other guys who are, who are watching a chance to play. Um, okay. So, um, Oh, Molloy Alloy, apparently you're here to play. Sorry, I'll try to find you in a bit. Ooh, B3. Awesome. Um, Sibha, C-I-B-H. Apparently my generation don't like, they haven't studied through books. I like internet playing. Um, <laughs> actually, so I'm from the 1990 generation with um, players like Magnus. Uh, I mean, we're all born in the same year, so Magnus. Jan Nepomnishi, Fashi Le Graf, Karyak and that lot. And um, I genuinely, I have a theory about why, okay, less so me, but why those guys are so good. And um, I do think it's because we were just, we were lucky enough to be at that kind of cross, cross point. Um, computers came in to help us, but we'd already done enough study, kind of classical study and enough with books and things um, to help us. And I mean, later generations is definitely more about the computers. Um, but maybe they missed out on a bit of that classical training and like, they weren't forced to read books as like the only re learning resource and I still remember those days vividly so um, that's my theory at least about why the 1990 generation just happens to have so many strong players um, Healthy Brick, yes I'm still taking opening requests, sorry I've kind of I, I did that last time and this time I've uh, slipped my mind but yeah uh, if you send an opening request I'll try to <laughs> I've tried to acquiesce to it, but um, if I remember, I do, yeah, in my classical games, I do play a lot of different openings, but it's more because uh, I'm trying to not be, a uh, not, not be a sitting duck. I try to be a moving target. It's not because I know loads about loads of openings. Half of it's bluff. I also like to choose my openings according to what I feel isn't in my opponent's comfort zone. So, um, White's King is very weak here. What can I take advantage of that? Maybe, do I... Do I capture on e4? I mean, that's a strong defender, there's knight. Then I'll play queen f7. And I mean, his king's cut off on the d file and some threats on the f file. Um, Teja, Ravi Teja, um, who's my favorite chess player of all time? An Englishman, too. Um, hard. Uh, favorite chess player of all time? Um, probably Kramnik. Uh, it's not just because he's beaten me like more times than I can remember, but it's because every time he beats me, it seems to be some kind of memorable game, like some huge deep concept, which I, uh, it's just mind boggling. Um, okay, let's just checkmate him first here. Uh, do I just swap queens? And... <laughs> That'll be super boring. I'll win a rook just by swapping queens and I eliminate the risk as well. Um, so my favorite player of all time, maybe Kramnik. And also he happened to be my generation and he, he's just a trendsetter with openings and things. Um, uh, favorite Englishman, uh, can I say myself? <laughs> no, um, I won't say Howard Staunton, although um, he'd be up there. Um, I mean, just because he's my generation and I've learned so much from him, both as a player and a person, I'll just say Michael, Michael Adams. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, I kind of modeled my style after him uh, for a few stages there in my earlier development. So. And yeah, just a classy act on and off the board. Um, 
Bateman 47, the real open, David, C3 Sicilian. Um, when did I last play in the real open? I think I must have been quite young. Um, okay, my opponent's playing on. Um, here's a rook down though. I'll try and win this one quickly so we can get a couple more games going just before we end. Um, Dash Bruceman, why am I calling Fiona a live time ago? I'm not sure what you mean, but yeah, um, Fiona's a good friend of mine. And we, we did the commentary together in Gibraltar this year, which was fun. She kind of held my hand uh, through it figuratively. Um, yeah, thank you for the game, Ajaj. Um, yeah, I think just difficult opening for you there. Never got King quite safe. Um, okay, Peter Quinn. I think I'll just maybe play two or three last games here. Um, there is, uh, for those of you who are watching and want some more top class entertainment uh, later today, then uh, yeah, in just actually half an hour's time, I think there's a banter blitz match between uh, Alareza Ferruzia, kind of everyone thinks he's the next world champion, there's, uh, and Narayanan, the Indian player, who's extremely good, extremely quick, and phenomenally uh, strong. So yeah, I'm going to be watching. I hope you do too. Ooh, my opponent's very high rated, 28.94, but I think he's just blundered. He's walked into an opening trap. It's a double attack. G7 and D4 are both attacked now. Um, Topo Harley points out that Jakob Argaard did an endgame book. Yes, um, that's maybe for a certain level, Jakob Argaard. Um, I mean, I respect him a lot as a coach. Uh, Peter Quinn, yeah, sorry, I tricked you there. I'm a trickster. But it means we get to play more games. This is good. Molloy Alloy. I saw you in the chat earlier, so... Oh, I've been requested to play the Latvian Gambit, but <laughs> not sure. Not sure my opponent will let me. Um, I'm asked, being asked about Alareza Ferruzia's strengths. Um, uh, it looks like Molloy, like you were saying in the chat, you were there and ready to play, but looks like you're not. Three, two, one. Okay. I bought that one. Um, okay. Uh, Wait, did I play Clamour last time? I feel like we've played before. Hmm. Okay. I'll give you the benefit of the doubt. Um, oh, I meant to play C5 there, but okay. Mouse slip. Um, yeah, I feel like uh, Alareza has many, many strengths. It's hard to narrow it down. <laughs> it's not just speed of thought. It's, I mean, it's tactical awareness. It's the, the way he plays with the initiative. Um, and it's just that, I mean, youthful, uh, not in a condescending way, but I genuinely think it's a factor, but it's the youthful kind of um, ambition and uh, positivity. Because, I mean, I remember when I was young, I used to go for an attack in every game, and most of the time it would work just because I thought it would work, even though objectively it wasn't correct. But um, it seems Alareza somehow, he makes the tactics work in his favour because he's not scared to go for them. Um, and when you get old like me, you get scared to go for these tactics. Trust me, it gets harder, especially when you're playing a young and kind of quick, ambitious, confident player. It's hard to go into a tactical melee because you, you feel that, it, I mean, it suits them simply. So, uh, yeah, I'm playing an, uh, an old opening line here in the Slav. Um, I played this a few times against Anand myself. I managed to, well, I nearly beat Anand in a classical game uh, from this opening, but he managed to wriggle away and secure a draw. So. Um, let's see what happens in this game. Yeah, I'm playing against the isolated queen spawn. Uh, I used to love these isolated queen spawn as white when I was younger, but um, yeah. Again, the older I get, the more I kind of start started playing against the isolated queen spawn. Um, I've been asked to play the Budapest Gambit. Oh, I should have played it in this game. Magnusia Kasparov wannabe. Ah, uh, sorry, I didn't see that you'd uh, challenge me. I'll try and play you if this time after this. Magnusia Kasparov wannabe. Thanks for becoming premium just for this. Um, yeah, so I've got to be a bit careful here. He probably move bishop d5. I don't like the fact that he's always able to take on f7 with his knight and then bishop takes e6, so I want to stop that plan. Um, and normally it's a good idea to exchange some pieces at least in these, uh, these pawn structures. Um, when you're facing the IQP, the isolated queen's pawn, it normally becomes weak if you're able to blockade it or if you're able to exchange off um, as many pieces as possible. So bishop e3 is, uh, yeah. I mean, it's a solid move, but it's the kind of move he doesn't really want to play. Normally, White wants to go for a kingside attack. So, 
yeah, rooks you want. I guess I'll take that rook. If you, yeah, if you took with the rook, which he wants to do, then I would have played uh, queen takes a5. Actually, let's fix that pawn on the a, a5 square now, just so he can never play a6. His, his rook's tied down, defending it forever. Um, I mean, I feel I'm maybe slightly better as black, but, or at least it's easier to play my position. But yeah, I mean, it's not far from equal right now. Queen d1, what does that do? So you want to bring his queen over to the king side, maybe. Um, okay, I'll play bishop d6. Yeah, nice. Now, my idea was to put, or oh, do I play bishop f4? Do I want to exchange? Um, let's play bishop c7, keep my options open. I guess he would play queen g4 now, otherwise his queen d1 move looked a bit odd. Okay, similar idea, queen h5. Um, yeah, it's not so easy for me to get my bits into the game, my pieces into the game. I'll play g6 just because I I'm probably have to at some point. Maybe I didn't need to rush that. Maybe I should have waited. Maybe just knight c6 and just take a5 and laugh at him. Just grab a pawn and claim I'm better. But yeah. Now, my idea was to play queen f6 and get my rook into the game. The rook was the only piece that's not doing anything. So. Uh, okay, rook c8 or rook d8? Maybe rook c8. Just because his d pawn's very well protected. I'm not really wanting to move my knight from d5 anyway. So rook on d8 might not be as active as it could be. And now at least if I move my bishop, I might have some ideas, tactical ideas on the C file. Um, ZZ glue, what's more important in chess, tactics or positional play? <laughs> Good question. Um, I mean, Nigel Short says that chess is 99% tactics. So he advises anyone um, who's kind of coming up through the ranks, um, especially I think below 1800 level, I mean, just focus on tactics, 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 because no matter how well you play positionally, tactics often decide the game. Um, but yeah, after that, it becomes a bit more strategic. And because everyone's so strong nowadays, the margins are so small, and you have to be very good uh, strategically. Um, should see one. Now I'll try and exchange off uh, some pieces. I mean, if you notice the game, white's been forced to retreat slowly, slowly. And um, now, whoops, um, nearly mouse up there. Um, yeah, now I think I win a pawn. His isolated queen's pawn finally drops off. I'll just come back. Uh, maybe I shouldn't have allowed knight g6. <clears throat> okay, now I, I want to stop knight g6, so then rook d8. I'll just reroute my pieces now on knight c6. I'm a pawn up, and I don't think white has much compensation. Um, and in doubt, swap the queens off. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm going to flag my opponent here, but <laughs> I think I was, uh, had, well, I did have a big advantage. Okay, maybe just one last game now. Um, who, did, who wants to play me? Magnusia or something. Oh, so many challenges to, to find. There. Um, oh, I can't find you, Magnusia. Um, okay, just because I saw he... Okay. Just because I saw he was keen for a game in the chat and he became premium especially for this. I'd like to play Magnusia. I mean, if you turn out to be Magnus or Gary Kasparov and if you crush me with your 1500 rating, then I'll be, I'll cry. And I might just keep going. I'll refuse to stop, but. Um, uh, it looks like, okay, I'll give you five, 10 more seconds, but um, if you don't play a move by then, then I might have to find someone else to play. Um, Ooh, that's a hard question. Who would? Okay, it looks like Magnusia is not there, so um, I'll abort that one. Um, Jonathan Pat Peterson, who would win in their prime, Nigel Short or Michael Adams? <sighs> that's so hard. I mean, if it's a one-off, one-off game, then it's so hard to say. Um, who should I play? Last game. Okay. Um, it's so hard. I mean, Nigel Short for a while he was phenomenal, but. Um, I mean, I, I think somehow Mag Michael Adams has burnt brighter for longer. So, um, yeah, I'd probably say Michael Adams in a match if you play it over 15. I mean, if you play like a World Championship format, like 12 games or something, then uh, or more, then I'd say Michael Adams. But 
if it's just a few game match than Nigel Short. I mean, he was phenomenal. Psychology-wise, he's just phenomenal in any kind of one-on-one situation. He never really gets nervous and he deals with deals with pressure really well. So okay, so I'm playing Bateman and he's he's played this G4 move. Um so if I played E6 last move, he would trap my bishop with G4, but now my bishop can come back. So I'm slightly happier. C3, C6. It looks like a French defense, like a very weird French defense. I never know whether I want to play h5 in these positions or not. Let's try it. h5, I mean, it's a pawn sacrifice if he wants to take on h5, but then white structure loses its uh, fluidity. And if he plays, yeah, if he plays this one. Okay, let's just play e6 now. Actually, oh, I should put my bishop out on f5, shouldn't I? Silly Dave. Um, okay, that's e sad. At least now white will struggle to get pawn breaks like with f4, f5 or g5, g6. Just yeah, I think that might be a blunder. Bishop d3. So now I can take on d4, and White doesn't have a good reply because if he plays Bishop takes f5, I can flick in d takes e3. And now if he takes this way, yeah, that's that is a queen loses a queen for a bishop. Okay, yeah, thank you, Bateman. Okay, one final final quick game. I'll try to make it super quick. Um. Uh, he's been waiting for a while. Yeah, I'm, I'm scared I'll get told off by the producers soon if I, <laughs> if I drag on too much longer. So, okay, just a super quick game here. A Sunday Duck. Wait, did I play you already? Oh, I'm losing track. So many challenges. Um, yeah, okay, it looks like <laughs> it's been the story of today. Too many people not being at the board when, the, when I'm ready to play. And... Uh, Okay, I'll just I'll click on a random three minute one here. Um, healthy brick. Okay, I'll make this super quick and then I'll have to say goodbye. Sorry everyone. But yeah, if you're if you're still watching, definitely don't uh, go anywhere, definitely stick around because um Alariza Ferruzio will be uh, well and Narian and they'll both be streaming their thoughts during their, their games in the Banter Blitz Cup. If Ferruzio wins, yeah, I mean he'll play Magnus and I think that's something we all want to see. I mean, how exciting would that be? But um, either way, I'll be watching. So my opponent's playing the hippo against me. It's like one of my favorite openings and he's, he's using my own weapon against me. Um, okay, I'll just develop my pieces to normal squares and I'll hope for the best. So nice C6. I mean, I can play D5 at any point or... Uh, yeah, the only problem with facing the hippo in blitz is you have to figure out how to try and attack it, and it's not always easy. Knight f6 is a very good move um, because knight g4 might come. I don't know why I played h4 last move. I should have played rook ad1 first and then decided what to do. But um, oh well, knight g4 might come now. Then I'll drop my bishop back, maybe. Oh, that's committal. Um, yeah, okay, I'll drop my bishop back to b1. Pusher, yes, I rate the hippo. I think uh, I wouldn't recommend the hippopotamus um, in a classical game, but in Blitz, it's, it's a good weapon. My knight on g3 is really bad now, so I'll try and reroute re that one. I'm playing queen d2, so that can maybe play knight e2 next. Maybe play bishop a2 at some point. Okay. Normally, that's not to be recommended. I mean, here I can take on d5 if I want to kind of be maybe slightly better, but. E5 looks sensible. Now he has some weaknesses on his king side. Um, I might have some tactical ideas at some point with knight takes h5 and then queen d3 to queen uh, and then queen h7. Um, yeah. Do I want to remove that knight on f4? Probably. I'm going to try a bit of a strange maneuver. I'm going to play rook e2. Actually, maybe that's just really, maybe that's just not strange. That's just bad. Uh, I want, okay, I want to play knight e1 and then f3 to keep my opponent's knight away. Maybe it's a bit slow. Okay. I mean, okay, now I've said a, I might as well say b. But yeah, that's probably just a waste of time. I, I mean, he had to go king h7, I think, last move, so he has the h6 square for his knight, but now 
Now he's forced into a sacrifice because um, his knight is trapped. Yeah, thanks everyone for your kind words and I hope you've enjoyed today's show. Um, I mean, I always enjoy being here and I wasn't feeling very well today, so this has perked me right up. So thank you everyone for being here. It's been fun. Um, I still have a game to win though before I'm allowed to log off. So, okay. Um, yeah, my opponent still has a decent position. Let's pretend I want to exchange bishops. Yeah, I mean, I've won a piece for two pawns, but my king is slightly open and my pieces aren't very well coordinated. So, um, do I exchange queens? Yeah, I'm a piece up. <laughs> you can witness the uh, chicken chess club at work one final time. Uh, come back. At some point, I'll try and just exchange off all the rest of the pieces and win with my extra, extra knight, but easier said than done. Got to speed up as well. I've been playing quite slowly the last few games. Um, yeah, I mean, I think objectively white should win, but it's not easy at all. Um, okay, my bishop's not great there, so do I play knight c2? I want to get rid of his knight, it's just super strong on d4, so. Okay. Attacking h4, was, which is a bit annoying. Um, now knight e3. I finally get those knights off the board. I mean, he's playing well. He's trying to create counterplay on this side of the board. Okay. Maybe I should have played f4, actually, before he plays d4. Yeah, let's play it now. I do give him a past. Wow. Yeah, I shouldn't have allowed that. <laughs> I should have kept my bishop on b1, actually. Oh, yeah, just silly, of course. Hmm. Now, it's not easy to stop his pawn. Ah. Uh. Hmm. Oh, I can't end with a loss. I'm going to have to hustle here. Oh, why did I do that? I was scared of some d4 check. But, um, I'm hoping to that some king and pawn endgame will win for me now if he goes h3. I think it should, but so h3, knight takes h3, king takes h3, bishop takes d5. Wow, but now I can take here. I mean, I'll just block his pawn. That uh, should be winning. This is hard work though. This is very hard work. I mean, eventually, I, the problem for black is that he'll get six wanged with the bishop. And yeah, thank you everyone. I'm gonna have to leave things there, but uh, yeah, I finally lost one today. I finally lost one, I'm gutted. But I'll try and be back soon. I hope you all had a good time and stick around for, for Ruzia against Narayana. Bye, everyone.